Hazel Ferris, born in Kentucky in 1880, orphaned as a child, and later married to a man with whom she drank heavily and fought loudly. Her history has morphed into folklore, but by all accounts, on August 6, 1905, the couple had an argument over Ferris's desire to buy a new hat. If you've been in a relationship for any length of time, you know that wasn't really what they were fighting about. The two came to blows, and Ferris ended up shooting her husband, who died on the living room floor. Neighbors who heard the gunshot summoned police. The situation did not improve upon their arrival, because Ferris shot and killed them too. A passing deputy sheriff heard the commotion, gained entry to the house, and tried to restrain Ferris. During the scuffle, the deputy tripped on Ferris's husband's body, accidentally firing his gun and shooting off one of her fingers. Ferris eventually broke free and fatally shot the deputy as well. So she shot the sheriff, and she did shoot the deputy. With five murders under her belt and a $500 reward for her capture, which I couldn't put into modern figures because the inflation calculators don't go back that far, Ferris fled to Bessemer, Alabama to try to begin a new life. One version of her story has her posing as a school marm, another has her working as a prostitute, but both agree that she drank excessively. She took up with a new man, and when they became engaged, Ferris confided in him who she really was. He immediately gave her up to police. On December 20th, 1906, fairly certain she wouldn't emerge victorious from a second shootout, Hazel Ferris committed suicide by drinking some combination of whiskey, fuel oil, and arsenic. Ferris's body was taken to Adams Vermilion Furniture, which also sold caskets and, as such, functioned as the local funeral parlor. No one came forward to claim her body, which was strangely mummifying rather than decomposing. There is speculation that it's because of the chemicals Ferris drank, but I don't put a great deal of stock by that. Regardless of the reason, the corpse had longevity and a certain renown. Adams began charging curious visitors ten cents to see the notorious outlaw. After a time, Ferris's body hit the road when Adams loaned the corpse to various exhibitors, including his brother in Tuscaloosa, Palace of Wonders sideshow operator Captain Harvey Lee Boswell, and O.C. Brooks, who featured the well-preserved remains in his traveling show for 40 years. When he died, Brooks left Hazel to a nephew on the condition that any money raised from displaying her be donated to charity. As the story goes, Brooks's nephew displayed Ferris's mummy to raise money to build churches in Tennessee. Just let that paradigm sink in. The nephew eventually brought her back to Bessemer, where she became an infamous attraction at the newly formed Hall of History. The Hall of History also had exhibits more typical of a modern history museum, such as the door to Martin Luther King Jr.'s jail cell and Adolf Hitler's telephone. And it's housed in a restored railroad terminal, just like the Science Museum here in my hometown. After a long run at the Hall of History, Ferris became the subject of a National Geographic documentary, which is where reality reasserts itself over folklore. An autopsy performed for the documentary indicated the mummified woman had died of pneumonia, not poisoning, but one of her fingers had indeed been shot off some time well before her death. The state of the body tissue was consistent with having been immersed in arsenic. It's entirely possible that the manner of Ferris's death was retconned to fit the state of the remains. After the documentary was finished, Hazel's owners decided to lay her to rest and had the body cremated.